Hello and welcome. I'm Cordy Petabyte, Professor Emeritus at Elf University, and I'm here today to give you a short overview on the Log4j or LogForge vulnerability, and to give you some information on how best to respond to this highly critical security issue. First of all, I think we need to acknowledge the lack of consensus over how exactly to say the name of this vulnerability. There are constant wars raging on the internet over various things like the best text editor or the correct way to pronounce the name of a graphic file format. Here at the North Pole, Santa has expressed some definite opinions on those two questions, and while I won't give away his answers, let's just say that Santa has a sixth sense when it comes to good editors and a, a real gift for pronunciation. But now we're faced with another debate. Is it Logforge or Log4j? Earlier today, I spoke with Santa and he had some wonderful advice. Pretty old friend, he said to me, let's not contribute to the problem. So, for the purposes of this presentation, we're just going to alternate between the two ways of saying the name. Let's start with a little background. On December 9th, security researchers published information on a high criticality flaw in a widely used software logging library called LogForge, written in the coding language Java. Log4j is hugely popular and it is estimated to be present in over 100 million systems worldwide. And unfortunately, many organizations are running tools that use this library, well, under the hood, so they may not be aware that they're vulnerable. Obviously, any flaw that affects 100 million systems is concerning, but this vulnerability is both easily exploited and gives attackers the ability to run arbitrary code on systems. This issue is, perhaps, the most dangerous vulnerability ever. The LogForge library is widely used because it allows developers to handle event logging in a clean, consistent manner in their code. But what exactly is the vulnerability in Log4j? Well, by default, LogForge supports a feature known as Message Lookup Substitution. This feature allows programmers to include special strings that are replaced by LogForge with other dynamically generated strings. For example, if you log the string shown in green on this slide, Java Runtime, that string will be looked up and replaced in Log4j's output with another string that specifies the version of Java on which LogForge is running. The problem is, one of these lookup methods Specifically, the Java Naming and Directory Interface, or JNDI, can be used in conjunction with the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, or LDAP, to fetch a specific uh, user-specified Java class file from a remote system. When this class file is deserialized, or turned back into a Java object in memory, some of the class's code gets executed. All of this is a rather involved way of saying that this vulnerability in LogForge allows an attacker to execute arbitrary code on vulnerable systems. Millions of vulnerable systems. Unfortunately, that's not even the only issue with these lookups. There are other non-default protocols that can exhibit this same vulnerability and even other lookup requests that can expose sensitive information, like configuration options or environment variables. This is an incredibly bad vulnerability. Recently, on December 14th, it was determined that the original patched version of Log4j that was released by Apache, that was version 2.16.0, was not fully effective in preventing various types of attacks. So, on December 17th, 
Apache released version 2.17.0 to provide additional protection. Since the discovery of the LogForge vulnerability, there have been wide-ranging discussions of various mitigation steps that organizations can take to protect themselves from attack. Unfortunately, there's strong evidence that many of those manual workarounds may not be entirely effective. As of the date I'm recording this presentation, which is December 20th, it's our recommendation that Organizations update Log4j to version 2.17.0 and not attempt to use various manual mitigations. Now, let's talk about some of the tools that defenders can use to assist them in protecting their systems from attack. First of all, the fine folks at CounterHack have created new bonus challenges as part of KringleCon 4 and Holiday Hack 2021, where you can confront the LogForge vulnerability head on and can practice both your offensive red team skills as well as your defensive blue team skills. Just follow the signs to the North Pole when you're at KringleCon. The first and most important step in protecting your systems against the Log4j vulnerability is identifying any vulnerable application in your environment. We strongly recommend using the LogPresso Log4j2 scan utility. And, in fact, you'll be using that very tool in the Holiday Hack Bonus Blue LogForge Challenge. While this tool offers the option to automatically fix any vulnerable applications that it finds, we strongly recommend doing those changes manually. It's incredibly simple to use this tool. Just point it to the directory where you want to scan and it'll, it'll scan the directory for you and all subdirectories looking for vulnerable applications. It'll even scan inside of jar files and nested jar files for problematic code. Unfortunately, if you find that you have vulnerable applications, you may have only gotten through half the battle. Because this vulnerability is so dangerous, naughty folks on the internet have been very busy attempting to exploit it wherever they can. So you'll need to check and see if your systems have been attacked and, more importantly, have been compromised. The best way to do this is to examine your logs for any signs of attack and then use that to determine if the attacks succeeded. In the Holiday Hack Bonus Blue Log Forge Challenge, you'll use a tool provided by Josh Wright from CounterHack to identify log lines that may show Log4j attacks. Once again, this tool is also simple to use. Just point it at a log file and it will dump out a list of suspicious log lines for you to review. Let's take a quick moment to review the information that we've covered in this presentation. The LogForge vulnerability is a high criticality flaw in a widely deployed logging library. Many organizations aren't even aware that they're running code that uses the Log4j logging library. Our best recommendation at this time is to pass on the various manual mitigations that are being discussed on the internet and to patch your systems with the 2.17.0 version of the library. Finally, here are a couple of additional tools that you may find helpful in addressing this vulnerability. The first is a constantly updated listing of vendors and applications that are known to be affected by this issue. While you should take a look at that list to determine if your organization is potentially vulnerable, we strongly recommend scanning systems wherever possible. The second link is to another scanning tool made available by the Com Computer Emergency Response Team Coordination Center at Carnegie Mellon University. You can never have too many high quality tools when you're looking for a vulnerability of this magnitude. Thank you for joining me in this presentation. 
I sincerely hope you've learned something useful. Please use the Holiday Hack 2021 bonus log for j challenges to practice your defensive skills and learn more about how you can best protect your organization. Finally, once you've gotten past your response to this vulnerability, please have a safe, happy, and healthy holiday season and try your very best to stay on Santa's nice list.